Oh, hey guys. Uh, we're out here in the greenhouse. We have uh, freezing temperatures coming for like five or six days in a row. So what we're doing now is we are actually trying to get everything inside the greenhouse that is susceptible to being frozen. And what we have here, we'll just take you on a little tour. What you're looking at here is back when I had the grow light and the potting little peat pot things, we planted those tomatoes. Well, these are some of the tomatoes and we're experimenting in our greenhouse to see how they do before we plant them in our garden this coming spring. Now, the first ones we have here, we labeled them here. These are the box car willies. We had a, two of them or three of them maybe right here, four that done real good. I got, I got, I got them stuck here. And then we only had one of the Aunt Ruby's. Uh, what type was this? This was Aunt Ruby's Green German Tomato. We had one of them that made it. And it's looking pretty good. But now down here, these four were all the Black Creme. Now the Black Creme, every one of them came up. Every one of them is doing real good here in the greenhouse. So that's kind of a little bit of a promising looking tomato for us this coming year. Uh, we move on down to this pot here. We had a couple of the A. Blinkens that came up. Uh, they're not looking too bad. As a matter of fact, looking here in the top, right here, we may even be fixing to get some blooms in the top of this. So, well, that would be a blessing. And back here in the black crown, look at this. I just noticed. We're starting to get some blooms in the black crown also. So, not bad um and then we have one here that came up this was a homestead now that's the only one of them that actually came up and made it so we we're going you know we're giving it a shot we'll see what does what and you'll notice in this pot right here you see this white stuff the this pot was full of fire ants now i'm up to five pounds of de in this pot trying to control these fire ants and when i got to the five pound mark it seems like they're not coming to the surface anymore and i haven't dug down into it don't know yet if they're down in there still but they're not coming to the surface anymore so we've learned that on this pot and in the back back here uh, back over here this is a pineapple we had such success with our pineapples this year we decided why not just grow these things in the greenhouse and grow our own pineapples guys i mean heck if it works we're going to do it and coming on down here if you look in the background over here again you see another pineapple here another pineapple here um, and back over in here we've got a whole bunch more plants here now we've got let me back up here this is our pineapple this is a pineapple that grows from our pineapples so this is not some store-bought pineapple this is a deep south grown pineapple right here and we're saving that one particularly to make sure and see what it does to see if it actually does a better job now if you look down here you see this pot here and this pot here all white looking I got five pounds of DE in both of these because both of these pots were nothing but giant fire ant beds. Nothing else was working. DE didn't work until I got to the five pound mark on each one of them. And like I said on the other one, the ants have quit coming to the surface, but I don't know about deep in the pot because if you look down here at the bottom, let's look right here. You see right here, if we can get focused in there on that, that's where they're coming in the pot at. Right here, they now, I, nope, you see that right there? The fire ants are still in the base of it. They're just not at the top yet. So we're going to have to see about turning more DE into this pot, trying to get it further down into it and see if that'll help. But now let's look over here in the back right here. Okay, here we have our aloe vera. We believe in keeping our aloe vera here. It's a very good herb that we use all the time especially for burns and stuff go right here we've got some stevia we always grow our stevia in here and then we've got some of wanda's uh what do they call this uh mother-in-law's tongue or whatever they call that thing <laughs> uh, something like that something like that anyway it's a flower she keeps and then you know we got some more little small pots down in here 
Wanda's rooting her some more aloe vera. If you look down inside, if we can get a little bit closer there. Right down Somewhere. in here, right in there, there's thyme. I see the uh, English it's thyme. There. It's in there. Of course, now this is the one that grew the big pineapple for us this year. And it's got a little baby coming out here on the side right there. So we're, we brought it to the greenhouse. We're going to try to keep it this year and see what happens with that. If you'll notice the leaves on all these have been cropped off. Anytime you move a plant like that, it's got to get reestablished. You need to trim the leaves back on it pretty heavy because if you don't, then what it does is, is it causes the roots to be, the plant to be stressed because it hadn't really had a chance to get going. And to be honest with you, all we're trying to do through the winter is keep these things alive till next spring when we get them back in the ground again. Now, if you look over in behind there, in a little pot back there, there is some Greek oregano I see. Wanda has stuck some of that back in there in a pot to keep our oregano going here in the greenhouse. This right here, this big pot right here, this is our pimento pepper. Now we have a we have a pepper here that's, that's doing good. Um, we'll let it be turning red here in the greenhouse. And then right in behind it right there is another stevia plant that we have in here. We don't want to lose them. This here is another pineapple that we harvested one of our pineapples off of this year, right out of the top of it. So we're going to try to keep it going. In behind it right here, this plant you see right here, this is turmeric. Uh, turmeric is, we got it growing in here. And then another, over in behind that right in there is another aloe vera in the background. Now here we have a pimento pepper and Malabar spinach growing here. It's about time to harvest the seeds off of them. As you notice, they're getting to a point where they're not glossy black anymore. They're trying to shrivel in a little bit. So we need to get these seeds kind of harvested off of this uh, Malabar spinach. It's kind of looking a little bit bug riddled because when it was outside, the bugs kind of, let's just say it this way, they like it much as we like it. So, so they've been kind of working on it. Now this right here was a gift from one of our subscribers. This is actually a tea tree where you actually eat, uh, make a tea from the leaves of it. And we're going to be keeping it to, uh, to plant later. And if you notice, it has a bloom on it here. It makes seeds. So we are keeping them. Then here we have a jalapeno pepper plant. This is a second year jalapeno. Well, it's two years old. We're keeping it in here. And then these two tomatoes here are some that we planted that uh, was in our um, grow lights. They're doing good. You notice they have a different kind of leaf on them. These tomatoes have a leaf that almost resembles a potato plant. Uh, this is called a Prudence Purple. These two right here are. We're going to be growing them to see how they do. Now, this one here, I can't really tell you which two tomato plants this is because the tags got lost on them. They're going to be one of the ones we've mentioned here so far. We, we won't know till they actually grow up and we get to see the tomato. And then we have, these are our bell peppers. They are starting to uh, turn red. We, they're, they've just about gone completely through the, you notice up here we've got some young ones coming on. Uh, they've gone, they're, they're just about over the shock from being transplanted. Now these will be two year old bell peppers. This is another one. We always bring them into the greenhouse and keep them for the next year. And this is another one. Uh, Cause here at Deep South, we eat a lot of pepper. Uh, and, and we want to make sure that, that we have plenty of peppers here at our homestead and we'd raise them over in the greenhouse. Now we've got another tomato here. This one here, let's see which one this one is. This one says this is the Big Rainbow. It's another one of them we had um, under the grow lights that was sent to us by a company to test. So we're anxious to see how they're going to do here at Deep South Homestead. This here plant that looks so pitiful is a Marconi. This will be its, uh, I think it's the second year on this one. The third year one's still out there. we got to go get it and bring it in. But it's just now starting to, roots are starting to take hold. You look, we got some new growth coming in the tops of it here, and there's new growth coming out all up the stem of it here. So it won't be long. They'll be uh, producing us some more Marconi peppers in here. And this here is also some tomatoes that lost their tags. 
they're one of the varieties that we just told you about because they were all in the same bunch uh, we'll see when they get going good which ones they are this pot right here we planted, as y'all remember from one of our earlier videos, we planted some white potatoes in there that a subscriber sent to us. So we haven't seen anything popping up from them yet. Um, so we're anxiously awaiting that. And then we also have another pot over here. That, the potatoes, we put some in it, but they rotted. So we're not sure what went on with that. And then in the background here, you see this tree here. We brought in one of Ms. Wanda's Moringa trees to keep in the greenhouse um to make sure that we don't lose our moringa trees we dug it up put it in a little pot basically just to overwinter it it's not going to be in there permanently and as you back up and look you can still see on the shelf back here in the back we still have our sugar cane growing back there it's starting to root pretty good it won't be long so that'll be able to uh be stuck somewhere we may put them in some little containers and then next spring set them out but I hope y'all have enjoyed the uh, tour of our greenhouse and what we're doing with it. It seems like a, a small greenhouse, but yet there's a lot of labor went into, into this. Uh, we've been working for now several hours this morning just getting these pots in here, getting our plants in here, getting everything ready for this freezing weather that's coming. Because right now our greenhouse is at 70 degrees up there, and that's not a bad temperature for a greenhouse. That's actually an ideal temperature. So, so guys... Thank you from Deep South Homestead.